we're vlogging from the graveyard again. Yes. <laughs> There's a good reason why though. Yeah. Yesterday we went to the Dodds Museum and then the Chandor Gardens. Yeah. And it all ties back to here. Yeah. So watch that first <laughs> and then we'll tell you how it all ties back here. Oh, yeah, we're at the Chandor Gardens. Yeah. Yeah. And um, Douglas Chandor was an artist. Yeah, world renowned. Painted a whole lot of famous people. Presidents. Eleanor um, Roosevelt? Hoover. Yeah. Um, I have it somewhere. Who else were the other famous ones? A lot of the, but the, the famous have to look. paintings are like at the Smithsonian. They're like big time. It's gonna bug me. Oh, there. Hoover, Roosevelt, Churchill, and then some famous people. But those royalty, are, Queen Elizabeth. Yeah. 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 So, and then we got to see the house, which is gorgeous. It's decorated for Christmas, so it's just awesome. It they they host a lot of weddings and Christmas parties, parties and yeah. so it's getting done up for that right now. Yes, this place is just really cool. It's phenomenal. The gardens so. are unreal. Like, I could play in this all day. We're, we're probably about to show a ridiculous <laughs> amount of B-roll yeah. because it's just so cool. So, this I hope you like heaven. the scenery because you've got to see a lot of it. Uh, and the <laughs> smells, all the different yeah, it's like things they have planted smells. Like, everywhere you go, it's a different uh, smell. They got like the sage and the lavender and the... So I could have smelled either jasmine maybe or gardenia. Jasmine. Yeah, was, yeah all kinds so of different good. cool stuff out here. So. Um, yeah, let's go see some more. Okay.
so this is the place where Douglas and Ina you got it right Chandor <laughs> are <you>. buried <laughs> Just and they were the ones that lived there at the Chandor Estate, which we just showed you. Yeah. And it was really cool. It was such a cool place. Every direction you walked, there was something cool to see. And even the direction you just walked, you have to walk the opposite direction to see. It would have been awesome to live there. Because it looked cool the other way. <laughs> they went to the Dodds Museum. And if you saw, they're the, uh, the stagecoaches. Yes. J.W. Brown was the guy who built a lot of those stagecoaches. Mm -hmm. And uh, he passed away back in 2011, I think she said. Yeah. But he built a lot of stagecoaches, not only just for the fun of it and for the profit of it, he built a lot for Hollywood. Yes, for the film industry. Yeah, so, and that's kind of more of what ties us to here, is he built stagecoaches for a bunch of movies and, and shows like uh, uh, Tombstone, Tombstone, Maverick, uh, Maverick, and Lonesome Dove. Yeah. And you probably saw in the museum the saddle of the Tommy Lee Jones rode right. in in the movie Lonesome Dove, and he is portraying um, um, Charles Goodnight. Well, Charles Goodnight's the real guy. Yeah. And his his movie name was Woodrow. Was Woodrow Call. Yeah. But he really was a Texas Ranger. He's not buried out here, but there's some yeah. other really cool ones that are buried out here, and some other ties to the. Uh, to the Dodds to the, Museum. So yeah. we'll show you that here real quick. Right now we're at the grave of Samuel Redgate and I didn't see much about him in the museum. I don't no. think they talked about him, but if you get, they had little pamphlets there that told mm -hmm. you like all the significant people who are buried in Greenwood. Yeah. And he's one of them. The reason why is because he was one of the, make sure I got this right, he's one of the last, he's the very last. The last known. Living. Well, when it was. He was the last known survivor yeah of the original 300 settlers of Texas yes so the 300 who came to settle Texas he's the last one to, to die to, yeah so that's the significance of, of Samuel uh, Redgate and this is like all of his family members and kind of a little, little biography about him but it's pretty cool yeah that's a big part of Texas's history uh -huh. I mean the initial settlement of Texas so now we're standing at the grave of Sergeant Bowen Chester Bowen. Yes. The cool thing about him is not only did he fight in the Civil War, he's a Medal of Honor recipient. Yeah. I don't know that I've ever seen any grave, grave of a Medal of, of Honor recipient before. Yeah. I mean, we've seen some Civil War stuff. Yeah. I'm traveling around a little bit, but Medal of Honor is pretty rare. Well, not in a public, regular old public yeah. cemetery. You go to Arlington, you'll see exactly. stuff like that. But. Yeah. But this is really cool to see uh, a Medal of Honor yeah. recipient from the Civil War. And uh, we brought some pennies out here with us today, so we're going to leave some pennies at, at some of the veterans' graves that we find along the way. And um, But this is a really cool piece of history. Yeah. Now we're at the grave of Mary Martin. And you saw some of that in the Dodds Museum yeah. because she was from Weatherford. And so she was Peter Pan. Yeah. The first Broadway Peter Pan. Yeah. yeah. That's what she's most famous for. So, I mean, that's before our time. But yeah, I I remember hearing about it, yeah, and seeing, seeing pictures and, and stuff, stuff like yeah. that on, on old shows. Uh, and Mary Martin is the mother of uh, Larry Hagman. Yes, Larry Hagman. Which was I did like, not know that. I didn't I know, know that either until we just started kicking around here and learning stuff about yeah. Weatherford. But um, because the name's not a, a, a tip off, no. So we had to read about Mary before we found out that hey, it's Larry Hagman's mom. Yeah, because she was married to a Hagman for about six, six years, years, and yeah. they had a couple of kids, and Larry was one of them. He was I Dream a Genie, mm -hmm. and then best known for being Jr. in in the in the show Dallas, yeah. which is cool because probably that, in the next couple of episodes you're gonna see we're gonna visit the Southport branch, and I believe he's buried in the Dallas area. Well, I thought he said he's got uh, scattered. Or was he scattered? He, he died in Dallas. He died in Dallas. He died at Dallas yeah. Hospital, and he was old. He was like 80, 81. Something like that. Yeah. He, he he lived for a while, um, but anyway, um, that's cool. That this this is tied to yeah. the Dodds Museum and is tied to Dallas history. Mm -hmm. One of the other reasons we're here today, the day after we went to the museum and uh, and to the gardens, is so that you could watch Lonesome Dove. Yes, <laughs> I have now watched it. She had never seen Lonesome Dove, and now she's seen it, and it's significant because. Uh, we're at the grave of Oliver Loving, 
and Oliver Loving uh, is portrayed in the movie Lonesome Dove by Robert Duvall yeah. under the name of Augustus McRae. Yeah. But Oliver Loving was the real name yeah. of the of the guy. He was yeah. also a Texas Ranger mm -hmm. earlier on. Uh, met up with uh, Charles Goodnight, mm -hmm. who was Tommy Lee Jones in the, in in Lonesome yeah. Dove, and uh, and they herded cattle and made the Goodnight Loving cattle trail. Trail. Um, some of the stuff in the movie was pretty true from what we researched, and some of it was, you know, kind of uh, blown out of proportion. Well, that's why they say it was loosely, loosely based, based on, on the movie. Trip. So he really was kind of a, 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 a hell on wheels kind of guy, yeah. and just kind of rush into whatever and Indian territory. Didn't really care much, and mm -hmm. and so uh, in the movie where you see where him and him and Pete went off and ran into the Indians and stuff. Yeah, that part of the story was pretty accurate. Yeah, that because was the when most... they got attacked and he got injured. True. Wilson was the guy's real name, yeah. but he was out there for four or five days wandering the prairie Barefoot. looking for Charles Goodnight and the and the rest of the guys to come back and find Oliver. Yeah. Um, and they did. They found him. Well, he, he got found by some other other people. He was injured and brought back into Fort Sumner. And uh, in the movie, they make it seem like within 24 hours, yeah. he dies. But it was several weeks. But it's two to three weeks. Yeah. yeah. And then he, it said that he he made a, he made good night, promise to bring him back to a, a place where him and his old girlfriend had a had a spot by a creek. That's not mm -hmm. really true, because he had a family back here. He's buried yeah. next to his wife. They had six kids, and he actually he six actually yeah he actually made uh, Charles Goodnight promise to just bring him back to Weatherford, yeah. Texas, which is right here, where he's buried. Yeah. So there are some truths truth. to it, yeah. and there's some. some are Hollywood very exaggerated up. yeah but it makes for a better story, story. yeah yeah <laughs> but some of it was true and the, and the and the story was really based off of oliver loving and charles goodnight yeah they were both their rangers journey. and their journey and their their cattle drives yeah and it's cool that uh that oliver loving is buried here mm -hmm. and um robert duvall played the character really well yeah i thought he did a really yeah, good job um uh, but it didn't in the movie didn't mention anything about his family yeah, or anything. No. He was really kind of in the of movie. Just, he wasn't a settled yeah. down guy. Even in his age, he was he just, just kind of couldn't lower stay in one place so. and liked to drift and stuff. Yeah. So anyway, that so was different. Um, yeah. There is one more character from Lonesome Dove who is out here at the cemetery, yes. and we're about to show you where he's at right now. Right now, we are at the grave of Bose Ickard, yes. or Bosey Ickard. I don't know how you say Bose. it, but anyway, he was the person that was portrayed in Lonesome Dove as Joshua Dietz, Dietz. which they just referred to as Dietz, Dietz. and uh, he was played by um, Danny, Glover, Danny Glover, a young Danny Glover, <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> and did a really good job, but one of the things we, like we talked about that was exaggerated sure. in the movie is yeah. that, that in the movie Dietz was killed out on the plains by some Indians and stuff, but that's not really what went down. He lived to be 85 years old married yeah. children but he did yeah. serve with with charles goodnight yes. uh yes, for a very long time for over 30 years worked for him yeah ranched with him fought with him mm -hmm. all that good stuff and when they buried deets and and pete asks uh, gus what the headstone says this is what it says that's actually here it, yeah what they say in the movie is actually what charles goodnight had engraved on mm -hmm. on bose ickard's grave yeah which is really cool that is cool. it's almost word for word exactly mm -hmm. what they said in the movie but um, anyway, he was a he was a slave originally, and then freed and had a family, and then worked for Charles Goodnight for a long time. Really loyal friend. Yeah. So, um, and I'll show you what the uh, what the inscription says, and then when you go back and watch Lonesome Dove, or if you've seen it before, you'll recognize the the words. Served with me four years on Goodnight Loving Trail, never shirked a duty or disobeyed an order. Rode with me in many stampedes. Participated in three engagements with Comanches. Splendid behavior, Charles Goodnight. Oh, and one more thing. The one more thing is that Oliver Levin and Charles Goodnight are both inductees in the Cowboy Cow Hall of Fame. Which we have been to. Which we went to a couple <laughs> weeks ago. So if you haven't seen the video from Oklahoma City when we visited the Cowboy Heritage and Museum, that's where the Cowboy Hall of Fame is. Yeah. So you'll see their names up there on the wall too, inductees mm -hmm. and all. Yeah. We didn't know it till we got here. Yeah. We learned it here and like, oh man, we were just there. Yeah. So it all ties Sorry. together. Yeah.
Well, Weatherford's a cool town. It is a cool town. Yeah, and we're about 20 minutes, 20 miles west of Fort Worth. Fort Worth. And uh, lots of cool stuff here, history. The buildings are beautiful, homes are beautiful. Yeah, even just driving through town, I mean, it's really nice. Cool. And um, so for the, for the couple of days that we spent kicking around Weatherford, we spent a total of, mm -hmm. what, 10 bucks? 10 bucks. Yeah, it cost like $5 a piece to get into the, the, gardens. the Chandler Gardens mm -hmm. yesterday. But, I mean, a couple of days of entertainment and learning and history. Yeah, and uh, seeing how it tied into other places we've been. Yeah. So really cool. We recommend uh, coming out to Weatherford. And we hope that uh, that you enjoyed everything we showed you. We hope you learned something. We learned a lot. Yeah. Yeah. We hope you. We hope we inspired you to go find new things and learn new stuff and share your adventures too. Because this has been really cool. A lot yeah. cooler than what I thought it was going to be. Yeah. I didn't yeah. think Weatherford had that much to offer. And we probably wouldn't have even looked in Weatherford if we wouldn't have been camping so close to it. Yeah. If our campground wasn't so close to this, we probably wouldn't have come over here. Yeah, because while we were waiting to do our paperwork and checking in, yeah, I was pulling pamphlet. grabbing pamphlets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So if we'd have been on the other side of Fort Worth or Dallas, we probably would have had no reason to come over to Weatherford. It. Yeah. But I'm glad we did. Yes. Like we do at the end of all of our videos, we're gonna honor a fallen hero. We appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.